Hi friends. Last week we started talking about the water cycle, clouds, and rain. Scientists do a great job writing down and drawing pictures of the things that they are observing. And last week I wanted you to observe the clouds and document or record what types you saw. When I was looking outside, I saw the stratus clouds. I saw cumulus clouds, fluffy. And I definitely saw some cumulonimbus, or sometimes we just call them nimbus clouds, those dark stormy ones. But I didn't really see any cirrus clouds. I don't know about you, but I feel like the weather wasn't super sunny. It was just more partly cloudy. Anyway, remember that a meteorologist is a scientist just like any other scientist that we re would record and document the things that they're studying. But meteorologists are just the scientists that study the weather. So let's get our brain ready to review the water cycle and learn more about the weather by saying our chant. Let's say it together. Are you ready? I'm a meteorologist and I'm here to say I study the atmosphere every day. I measure the wind, the rain, and the snow. I check the temperature to see if it's high or low. Studying, measuring, and predicting too. Doing the meteorologist boogaloo. Great job, meteorologists. We know that weather is a combination of sunlight, wind, clouds, rain, snow, and temperature. And when we learned about the water cycle last week, we discovered that the sun, which also heats up the earth, warms water from the oceans and lakes and turns it into water vapors. Water vapors are like the steam that you see coming from a really hot pot of boiling water on your stove. That vapor floats into the air and because the air is so cold up high, it cools the vapors down and then turns them into water crystals that mix with dust and then condense to become clouds. And once those clouds get really big and really heavy, then they create precipitation, you know, rain or snow. And that precipitation, it falls right back down to the earth to join the oceans and lakes again. And that's what we know as collection. So let's practice the water cycle together. You're going to stand up and do these motions with me. Ready? Evaporation. It goes high into the air condensation, we're making our clouds, precipitation, and collection. Let's do it again. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation, collection. Super job. Now that we've practiced the water cycle some more, we're going to read a story about something called severe weather. We have learned and talked about weather that happens every day all around us, but sometimes there's weather that can be dangerous. In this week's story, we're going to learn about some severe weather and the damages that they can cause. But we're also going to talk about ways that you can stay safe during those types of weather. I also want you to think about whether or not you have seen severe weather that's in this book. Because in Washington state, we're really lucky. Where we live, we don't have a lot of severe weather. Other states across the country have way, way more severe weather than we do. So I hope you enjoy it. Severe Weather Ahead by Karen Jones. Weather affects us every day. Rain, wind, and snow are all types of weather that many people experience all the time. They affect what you wear and may make you change your outdoor plans for the day. None of them cause great danger to people, animals, or our neighborhoods. There are some types of weather, though, that can be very dangerous. Some types of weather can cause harm to animals or people and damage property. Weather that is dangerous is called severe weather. Severe weather includes tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, blizzards, and thunderstorms. Some kinds of severe weather are more dangerous than others. 
Floods happen when too much rain falls. Usually, rain soaks into the ground, but if too much rain comes down, an area can flood. Floods are dangerous because they can damage homes and property. Moving water during floods can be dangerous too. You can stay safe during a flood. Get to a high place. Don't go near power lines or moving water and call for help. Hurricanes are huge storms that form over an ocean. They have swirling winds that can go up to 200 miles per hour. The center of a hurricane is called an eye. The eye is calm, but the winds around it are the most dangerous. Hurricanes can cause lots of damage to property and people. The strong winds can damage homes and cars. Hurricanes can cause flooding. Hurricanes can be very dangerous because of their large size. You can stay safe during a hurricane. Adults can put boards on windows to keep them from breaking. You can help gather food, water, flashlights, and batteries. You can make sure all of your important belongings are safe. During a hurricane, you should stay inside and away from windows. Blizzards are strong snowstorms with high winds. The falling snow and wind make it hard to see outside. Blizzards are dangerous when people try to travel during them. Roads are unsafe to drive on because you can't see what's ahead of you. During a blizzard, you can be safe by staying inside. Do not travel or go outside. When the blizzard stops and the snow is cleared from the roads, it's safe to go outside. Thunderstorms are rainstorms with lightning and thunder. They are the most common type of severe weather. Thunderstorms are usually not dangerous unless you are outside. To stay safe during a thunderstorm, stay indoors. If you are outside and a thunderstorm rolls in, quickly go to a safe place like a car or a building. If there are no safe places around you, crouch down in a ball. Do not stand under a tree or in water. Tornadoes are strong rotating winds that come from thunderstorms. They form a funnel shape that stretches from the clouds all the way to the ground and can swirl around up to 300 miles an hour. Tornadoes cause large amounts of damage and can destroy buildings and homes. You can stay safe during a tornado. Watch for weather alerts, and if a tornado is coming, go to a basement or to a room with no windows. Get under a sturdy piece of furniture like a table and stay inside until it's safe to come out. Severe weather can be dangerous. It's important that we follow the steps to stay safe if severe weather strikes. We can't prevent severe weather, but we can do our best to stay safe. Now it's your turn to tell your grown-up what severe weather is. Tell them some of the severe weather that you remember from our story. Then tell them one way that you can be safe during severe weather. When you're done, you're going to do this worksheet that I have attached to our Google Classroom. At the top, it shows all of the different types of severe weather that we read about in our story. Inside the box, you're going to draw a picture of how you can stay safe during one of these types of weather. On the line that's in the box, you're going to choose the weather that you're going to show how you're staying safe. If you chose to stay safe during a flood, you might want to draw a picture of you on a tall hill far away from the moving water. I can't wait to see what severe weather you chose for this activity. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.